this L is LU is unsupported length. Okay, so if we have uh, a beam coming in here and we have our column coming down and then we have another beam coming in at the bottom here. Okay, so for the L where we're calculating our K value, all right, you're going to come center to center of node. You're going to draw your node, right, just like you would model it in an analysis model. You would model the center line of these things. All right, so you use that length. Okay, however, for slenderness ratio, for this KL over R, you're using LU, all right? So LU is going to be clear span length, all right? So that's going to be coming from one face, from the bottom face of the top member to the this face of that, okay? So this LU, all right? So typically that LU is going to be less than L. All right, so this is another one to look out for. So make sure you're using the right L term. All right, given on this one, we have this KL over R, all right? For R's, all right, this is specified in the code, so we can do this too. There's a quick assumption for R's. If you have a uh, diameter of a circular column, right, you can take 0.25 times the diameter of that circular column to give an L, okay? For a rectangular column, you can take 0.3 times um, the dimension in whatever direction you're uh, assuming the stability, okay? These are not precise calculations of R, but this is specified in the code that you can use this, okay? So again, uh, this is much faster than trying to calculate the full one, so definitely use this one wherever you can get away with it on the exam. All right, now we have an example here. So note in this example, we have basically like an analysis model shown here, all right? In this analysis model, this is going to be the node-to-node -node dimension, 10 feet, all right, but it's specified that the unsupported height is only 9 feet, okay? So that's going to be the clear height that's going to be used in our KL over R term. So for KL over R, we're going to be using 9. For our calculation of K, we're going to be using that 10. All right, so uh, we're going to figure out how many beams are framing into each joint. So at joint 1, we only have one beam coming in and one column coming in, all right? So our stiffness at that joint 1 is going to be completely determined by one column and one beam going into that equation. All right, so using those terms, we're going to come in here, and we're going to figure this out. So they figured out one pitchfork of one, okay? And this is another thing to look out for, all right? So we talked about how to calculate um, those pitchfork terms for when we have um, a number of members framing into a joint, okay? But if it's given condition that we either have a fixed support, as shown here, or if we have a pin support at one end of a member, oh, shown here, Okay, um, this is specified in the appendix of uh, AISC, all right, in appendix uh, commentary to the appendix 7.2, all right? So this is in the commentary, appendix 7.2, all right? Uh, in the text there, it talks about uh, assumptions you can make for stiffness of a fixed and pinned uh, column, okay? So it says... For uh, column one, two, where it's fixed at the bottom, you're going to use uh, one as your pitch fork for uh, fixed. All right, and then for a pin, I don't have it in front of me, uh, 10. All right, so for this um, pin base, your pitch fork is going to be equal to 10. All right. For all these other terms where it's beams and columns, you have to figure out the stiffness relative to the beams and columns. All right. But if it's given to you that it's fixed, all right, then you assume it's actually fixed. All right. So then you're going to use that 1 and the 10. Um, so uh, that was asked previously, and I said, uh, depending on some situations, um, it will be uncracking. You'll be using your gross dimension, um, but uh, there are situations where we're going to be using effective moment of inertia in those columns, okay, uh, in those calculations. Yep. <clears throat> All right, so there's the illustration. So we came in with our pitchfork on one side of 1, 1 1.5 on the other side. So draw from 1 to 1.5. Right, and straight across there, and we're looking at somewhere on the order of 1.4-ish, and they came up with uh, 1.38, just under 1.4. All right, very good. All right, and then they use the approximation for calculating R, come up with KL over R. Okay, so now let's get into actual design of columns, right? So we figured out the KL over R term, all right? Once we have KL over R, this is going to determine um, if our column is considered a, a short column, okay? or if we need to consider slenderness, okay? So uh, short column, or if slenderness, uh, for a short column, sorry, slenderness can be ignored, all right? 
um, for uh, a column that doesn't fall into this short column category, then we need to consider slenderness, okay? So for here, if we meet this requirement, k over r less than 20, then we're short column slenderness can be ignored, all right? And then uh, all the slenderness effects we don't have to worry about. Um, column in a non-sway, okay? So if you're non-sway, then you have a different requirement here to determine if you're a short column and you can ignore slenderness, all right? And that's here, all right? So you check your KL over R relative to 34 um, plus, that's 12 over, and that's going to be the moments at the different ends of your column, M1 and M2, 